Well, without further ado, if you have other questions, email me or you can see me after class. I'm going to take Nancy to uh, storytelling. We're going to storytelling live this afternoon, something she's always wanted to do. And um, but she is the consummate ultimate storyteller herself through the media. We now have I've figured out we've now known each other for 22 years. Oh, you got to tell them that. <laughs> oh, oh, I, probably, no. I have shoes older than you. Guys. <laughs> we, we worked together, uh, met each other at Progressive Farmer. We both worked on staff at Southern Living at different times. Um, Nancy and I were the two that were, some of you probably heard me talk about Country Place Magazine, which is a magazine that uh, Time Warner put about a million dollars into to create a brand new magazine. And so we were, she and I became real close when we were charged with creating that magazine for Progressive Farmer. And um, we've just been great buddies and colleagues ever since. Nancy has won multiple national awards, as you know, from going to, I mean, go to your website. So they all know a lot of stuff you've done. But she is, um, she's got wonderful um, tips for you on everything from freelancing to being on staff of magazines to she's worked with newspapers. She's worked in PR. She's worked in magazines. Of course, that's one of the big things now as far as writers is looking for the options of the places where you can write and be paid for. And she certainly researched those. So without further ado, I'll give you Nancy Gorman Hickson. And this is that wonderful class I've been telling you. Yes, yes, she has. She's told me all about you guys. And the um, very reason I'm doing that um, is because somebody told me in a workshop recently that they don't consider themselves, quote, a writer anymore. They are an information producer. And that means that they will come up with content for whatever platform is needed, video, radio, audio, uh, any kind of thing. You no longer think of yourself as a writer. You think of yourself as a content producer. And as Deborah said, what I tend to think of myself as, and how I pretty much always thought of myself as, a storyteller um, in whatever format is needed. I myself have been in print, um, but I'm trying to move a little bit, you know, in glacial terms toward um, learning other ways of producing a story. So that's the reason for the video. I'm just using y'all as a guinea pig. Um, and this is, you know, anything y'all want to ask me, just jump in there. I tend to talk a lot, so just interrupt me if I'm, you know, whatever. I would like for y'all to ask me questions. But Deborah was very complimentary about you guys and what y'all have already accomplished and um, how you've already um, produced writing and your life stories, which, you know, you've got a real advantage if you've had an interesting life, even if it's been a bad life, even if things have gone wrong. As a storyteller, as a writer, that's great. That's gold, you know, to have had a, a life experience. If you've kind of had a, you know, Goody goody two shoes thing. It's like when are you gonna write about, you know, until something happens to you, something of significance. So think of it as an advantage. Um, I myself got into this journey um, pretty traditionally. I started off um, after I went to uh, undergrad school. I went to graduate school because I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And then when I came home, I worked for my small town newspaper. Um, and did that for a short time, starving to death, and I think they still pay pretty much the same wages. But I loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, and then I moved into public relations. I wasn't starving anymore. They paid me better, but I really didn't like the work that much. Um, it was kind of a catch-all position where I gave tours in the building, and I scheduled events, and I wrote news releases, and I worked on the internal newsletter, and I worked on the state journal for uh, veterinarians and did public relations. Then I worked for the university at large and did similar types of things. Um, Mississippi State. Yeah, Mississippi State. And I guess what I learned from that experience was everything can be useful because my next job was at Progressive Farmer Magazine. Ask me if I know anything about farming, even to this day. I don't. I don't know anything about farming, but because on my resume I had I had worked for a veterinary school, they assumed I knew something about farming, and I got in good enough to be able to uh, promote the idea of writing human interest stories in the farm community and in the agricultural world, and that's where I met this fine woman who, y'all are so fortunate to have her as your teacher. You truly are, and I say that from experience because she was my mentor. 
at Progressive Farmer. I was, you know, there sort of stumbling around like, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do as a magazine writer, but she had already been through, you know, work for Southern Living and had all this experience and was gracious enough to teach me and become my friend too. So it's been a real winning proposition for me for the last 22 years. Um, and so I can't say enough about that. Y'all really lucked into a good teacher here. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, what I have learned recently um, after the, the stint in public relations and progressive farmer, because I wasn't really doing hardcore agricultural stories, Southern Living, which was part of the same company, became interested and, you know, was, I, I think that I write pretty well and they, they noticed that. And I was really fortunate to get on there because most of the time they hired people who had a background in the specialty, you know, they home ec or they had some kind of food or garden or something like that. I didn't have any of that. I mean, I still don't. I am still very much a generalist and will write whoever will pay me. And I'll write whatever you want me to, you know. Um, but anyway, so I got on at Southern Living and just really fell in love with what I got to do there, which was I was the editor of the Tennessee Living section. I don't know if y'all have ever seen that, but it was like a little mini magazine that fit in Southern Living. And it was all about Tennesseans. And it only went to people in Tennessee, but it was great. It was all features and it was all you know, people stuff and place stuff, and it was just right up my alley. And I got to do that for Tennessee Living and also the other, what we call living magazines, which were, they had an Alabama Living and a North Carolina Living, a South Carolina, a Georgia Living, uh, Mid-Atlantic, uh, Texas. Texas Living, and all of those I got to go and write. I wasn't the editor, but I got to write. Editing meant that I got to come up with the lineup for the year, how many stories, what stories we were going to do. Uh, I got to make assignments for people on staff with freelancers. Um, I coordinated all the photography and I got to write. So it was a lot of stuff, but it was fun. And at one point the magazine, the Tennessee Living Magazine, was like 80 pages. So it was huge and it was only me. I didn't have staff. I had to depend on the kindness of strangers to write. You know, and at that point when it was 80 pages, I was like dragging people off the street and were, can you write your name here? Here's a story. Do this story for me, please, you know. And it worked out. Um, but uh, at, in 2007, I decided that I would rather try working at home and doing some freelance work and just see. I had a 12-year-old um, twins and they were about to start their confirmation stuff at church and I just thought, well, you know, I really think they might need me more now than they did when they were little. Hopefully, I mean, you know, mothers always hope that their children are going to actually talk to them and tell them <laughs> stuff, you know. I don't know why we fool ourselves like that. But I thought, they're not going to talk to me if I'm not here, you know, so I might as well try to be here. And um, that worked out pretty well. Um, you know, I, we actually do have a fairly close relationship. Um, and I freelanced about the same time the economy tanked. And um, a lot of the people that I work with, a lot of the people, have lost their jobs. They've either you know, been laid off or they've put in for a retirement package very early. And um, you know, what has happened is it's really flooded the market in terms of writers, people that are out there looking for work hungry for her. And um, so, given all of that, I uh, stumbled then into a book project, which I had no idea I would be called on to do that, but um, I've been doing that for the past year. And I guess what I've learned from all of that and what I would say to you is every experience that you have, every last one of them can be something useful towards your career. Um, if it's, you know, writing for your church or writing a school newspaper or whatever it is, it really can become something and lead to something else. Everything that I've been able to do job-wise has sort of built on the thing that I did previously. It's not like I had some master plan, believe me. I just kind of stumbled into these things. Um, and I, I have some sort of guiding things that I live by that, um, have been useful to me, and that is 
um, anytime I can help somebody, I try to, you know, professionally or personally too, but professionally, if I can help, I will try. A friend of mine um, was one of the ones who was laid off at Southern Living, and you know, he started a blog, which is a very typical thing to do these days, and he was trying to do the thing where you get enough hits on it that you're able to then generate some advertising income. And, um, but it was really slow going, and he he has children, and he is responsible for his family. His wife does work; she's a nurse. But you know, he, he emailed me and candidly told me, you know, my my severance runs out Sunday, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. And so I went to my husband, who's a professor at the university, and I said, do you know any writing jobs? I, I, you know, is it time for me to start looking for a writing job? Because, you know, I'm like always thinking, I'm not bringing in enough income, do we need to, you know. And he's like, well, no, you don't have to, we're, we're okay. But, yeah, actually, I just heard about one. And, you know, I immediately called my friend and said, you know, hey, there's a job that hadn't been advertised yet. And he, he was in there, you know, he was talking to the guy that afternoon about it. And I don't know how it's going to come out, but, you know, if you can help, do it. I mean, because the other thing is, you know, I look at all of you guys, and I know that someday y'all are going to be the bosses. Y'all are going to be the ones hiring. Y'all are going to be the ones making the assignments. And it just pays to be nice, even you know, even if you're not just trying to follow the golden rule. It pays to be kind to of people, you know, and to be helpful when you can. Um, there were some comments made in this article that I read the other day about what editors are looking for now. Um, the first thing you want to try to do is distinguish yourself. You want to come up with ways that, you know, first of all, you've got to have the basics. You've got to make yourself as good a writer as you can possibly be. And that goes for every one of us in here. I don't feel like I am um, the best writer in the world. I feel like I can get better. I always feel like I can get better because you can. You know, the more you write, the better you get. So write, 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 write. Um, even if it's journaling every day. You know, I recently started that where I get up and the first thing in the morning that I do is I write. Well, I cheat a little bit. I'm, I start the coffee and I feed the cat. <laughs> and then I write for 30 minutes. I write just anything that comes to mind. And eventually, what supposedly takes place is you become conditioned to write. To, you know, so you don't have all this. I don't know if y'all have this. Uh, I'm just not feeling inspired. Or, you know, I've got all these, I mean, the laundry really needs to be done. Or, you know, God, somebody wants to go to movies, and I'd really rather do that than, you know. There's all this stuff that we can put in front of our writing, and it's so easy to do. And I, I don't know anybody that doesn't have that problem, that doesn't struggle with making yourself. So this commitment of 30 minutes every day is a way of training myself to not procrastinate, to say, okay, you claim you're a writer. You get up and you make it a priority. And the next step after you've done this for quite a while is you then make appointments for yourself in your little calendar and probably in y'all's um, phone or whatever, however you keep it digitally. You make an appointment to write and you don't let anything interfere with that writing. It's like two o'clock comes, unless I'm bleeding or somebody in the household is dying, Two o'clock, I'm sitting in front of my computer and I'm 